Level 22, strumming patterns. Back in level 18, you learn how to read and count quarter notes and eighth notes in 4-4 time signature. Now we're going to use those note values to generate strumming patterns on the guitar. The music is posted just above the video, so have a look at that, and we'll get started. This lesson picks up where you left off in level 18. In there, you learned how to count quarter notes and eighth notes in 4-4 time signature. So if you're having trouble with the count, you'll want to review level 18, because in this level, we're going to focus on the technique of strumming quarter notes and eighth notes in 4-4 time signature. To reduce clutter and make this chart easier to read, I'm going to replace all these note heads with the G major chord. Now, for those of you who know how to read music, you already know that that's an E note. But just ignore that and replace it with the G chord. All we need is the note head and the stem to determine the note value when strumming rhythms. So if I were to include all the notes of that G chord on the staff, it would just look messy on this page. So I don't want that to be a distraction for you. Next, I want you to memorize these two standards when it comes to direction when strumming or picking the guitar. And that is down equals frown. These down brackets represent down strums or down picks. Smiley equals up. So those V symbols represent up strums on the guitar. And you can see those on the and syllables in measure three. I wanted to avoid the use of arrows because the guitar looks nothing like it sounds. On the guitar, down is up and up is down. And it's just confusing to use arrows to show that. So these brackets avoid all that confusion and they are the standard when it comes to guitar tablature and learning resources. So with that being said, I want you to memorize your first rule on strumming. And that is, on downbeats, you perform down strums. On upbeats, you perform up strums. Downbeats are the count. One, two, three, four. And you can see with those brackets, we're performing down strums on those counts. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. On the upbeat, we perform up strums. And you can see that with the V on these and syllables. So when you're strumming eighth notes, you'll have a down strum on the count and then an up strum on the and syllable. Now there is a difference between picking and strumming. Earlier, you learned that when you pick, you move from the wrist. But when we strum, we're gonna put more emphasis on moving from the elbow. Now, great players move exclusively from the wrist, and those are special techniques. And you get players who move partially from the elbow and the wrist. I'm not knocking those techniques, but in the beginning, just try to think more from the elbow so that you can get a wider arc in your strum. Now, you wanna keep the hand relaxed. You don't want a rigid wrist and you don't want to over grip the pick. Uh, the consequence of that is getting stuck in the strings. When you relax, the pick will just glide across the strings in a percussive manner. So you don't want this, you know, where you're grinding the strings. You want a percussive effect like that, like just a thud. And if you're holding the pick lightly, you can avoid that grinding across the strings. So from the side view, you can see that the hand is running parallel to the guitar. So I'm not approaching the strings from this way. I'm running the hand in parallel like this. And if I relax, when I play the down strum, the strings will guide the direction of the pick in the up direction. And if I relax, when I perform an up strum, the opposite happens. The pick is guided in the down direction. So you want to keep it nice and loose and allow the strings to do the work for you. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to get sound when you're strumming. Picking, you have to pick a little harder, but with a strum, you've got a lot of energy hitting those strings. And so you just need to barely wisp the tops of those strings to get the best volume and tone from your guitar. Now all we have to do is apply our strumming technique to the counts. And the rule is pretty simple. On downbeats, you perform down strums. On upbeats, you perform up strums. The counts represent the downbeat. The ands represent the upbeats. So in this example, when you have quarter notes, those occur on downbeats. Here's examples of quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On the eighth notes, we play the down strum on the downbeat and then we come back by striking the strings on the upbeat on the end. 
and it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I'll play a measure of quarters followed by a measure of eighths. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. And if you noticed, the notes were faster on the eighth notes, but my hand moved at the same pace throughout the entire exercise. One, two, three, four. The only difference being on the eighth notes, I'm striking the strings on the way back up. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. And that's why when you play quarter notes, that even though you're only playing down strums, to make sure that the stroke that you're missing on the way up is rhythmically balanced. So you want one, skip, two, skip, three, skip, four, skip. And that way you can avoid the rhythmic wobble when you get to eighth notes. One, skip, two, skip, three, skip, four, skip, one, and two, and three, and four, and. All I did was replace the word skip with the word and, and I seamlessly went into eighth notes. To clear up any confusion, I'm gonna bring out measure five in this musical example, and there we have a mixture of quarter notes and eighth notes. So the rule is, once again, on the counts you perform down strums, on the ands you perform up strums. So counts one and two have quarter notes, counts three and four have eighth notes. Here's how it's gonna look and sound. I've got the metronome set for 60 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. The click of the metronome represents the counts. And if you notice, my hand always went down on the clicks and then up in between the clicks. And that's how you're going to approach this exercise. When you get to the quarter notes, you'll play down strums on the click and a skipping up strum in between the click. On the eighth notes, you'll play down strums on the click and then up strums in between the click. Okay, it's time to perform this thing. And to demonstrate, I'm gonna work with you from start to finish at 60 beats per minute on the metronome. Now, if this is too fast, you can always slow me down on the media player. And just as you did back in level 18, make sure that you vocalize those counts. So on the counts, you'll say one, two, three, four. And when you get to those eighth notes, as you perform that up strum, you will say the word and. So make sure that you vocalize as you play. It's important to get your counting in sync with your playing. All right, I'll give a four count and we'll begin. This exercise will be performed over a G major chord. One, two, three, four. One. 